All right, ladies and gents, I'm back. Man, it's been a while since I did my last one. And I keep saying this, that I'm going to do it on a weekly basis. But time gets you, right? And it's, it's all about how you come back strong. And that's what it is. So ladies and gents, I'm back with another controversial episode. And today is the end of the month, 31st August. We are heading to Q4. So I thought, man, I need to do an episode. I have to. I have to keep myself accountable. And what could be better than finishing the month with a controversial stuff, okay? I do have a few other topics I want to do. And I realized when I started this podcast, I had no pattern. Well, no plans whatsoever. But then I started talking about my life and my stories. And it went on quite, quite a bit, episode 7, 8. And I thought, hey, how about let's keep this season 1 about my background, my history, immigration, whatever I've gone through, my struggles, past, right? And I do have a few episodes I mentioned, and all of them are dark. Today, I'm going to talk about DUI. It's a dirty business. Yes, you heard it right. And everything I'm going to say, talk about, is based on my personal experiments. I've gone through it, and I'll talk about it, okay? There's always something to learn from it. I'm, I wasn't sure if I should do this or not. It's kind of a gray area because people will start judging you. And I'm not concerned about judgment or opinion because everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? I'm just concerned about those, my people, you know, and there are a few whose, whose opinion mattered to me. Um, and because they might get influenced by others who might pull things out of context. And that's what happens all the time. So I try my best to do things, right? Like I try not to do anything outlandish. So anyways, going to the chase, there are a few topics I want to talk about. All right. One is this DUI, which is I'm going to do today. And there's marijuana, another dark topic. And uh, relationship. Dark? I don't think relationships are dark. But, man, relationships. I did talk about my family, but not about girlfriends and stuff. I'm talking about romantically, right? Relationships, sex, man, it's been ancient. So, not too sure what to talk about. Did they play a part in the DUI? Maybe a little bit. I was affected a little bit. All right. And that's why I want to make sure that I tell you everything to the point as clearly as possible so you can see how everything played out, ladies and gents. And a lot of things I'll tell you might seem like movie scenes, like totally outlandish and stuff, but literally it actually played out that way. Humorous parts, whatever I mentioned, 99 person, okay, it's not just I'm making it up just to make it funny. It actually came out that way. It actually happened, okay? Maybe it's funny because it actually was funny then. So, and I can't do nothing but laugh at it right now, but it was painful. When I was going through it, it was painful. And yes, I did record some videos back then, and maybe I'll show it down the road, some clips of me wearing the belt, the alcohol belt on your foot, whatever that is, the trap for six months and paying for it. Anyways, I'm coming to that in a second, all right? So yes, relationships, maybe I'll mention it. Maybe that's my last topic. And yeah, that'll be my season one. Season two, I'll come back with something different, right? So let's keep it that way, okay? And again, I might go off on a different topic because I am prescribed ADHD to some extent. And it's uh, five o'clock in the morning I'm doing this because, yes, I think this is in, it's something that hit my mind. I wanted to do this for quite some time, okay? And if I don't get it out of my chest, it's, it's gray, I was thinking, should I, should I not? But yes, there's always something to learn from it. And since I started my story telling everything, why not? Because you need to see how everything plays out, right? So ladies and gents, without wasting time, okay, I wouldn't be twisting and turning any words. I'm just going to tell you exactly what happened, okay? So anyways, I know it's dark, but people need to learn, okay? So 2000, it's been four, five, six years now, I believe so. Wow. Virginia, Commonwealth. DUIs are very brutal in Virginia. It used to be, still, still is. And I'm sure DUIs are pretty brutal in man, pretty much everywhere. But I'll tell you this, how it's a freaking dirty business, right? But before that, just a quick history. How did I fall into this DUI trap? All right, am I an alcoholic? Because I mentioned about marijuana, alcohol. Yes, I was involved in alcohol a lot throughout my college years. I drank a lot. I drank more than normal people, normal, usual people's. I don't know what is usual because I drank and I drank until I wanted to stop. Okay. So some people say this guy has alcohol problems. Some of some other OGs, they call me, he's a professional drinker. I don't know. You can just call me whatever. And yeah, sure. You can judge me. 
no problem. Like I said, I'm not concerned about judgments, honestly, or people op people's opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. But what I'm concerned with is, again, people pulling things out of context and quoting you and stuff once you get noticed. So I do my best to make sure whatever I put out there that, okay, I can stand behind it. All right? So anyways, this is what happened, all right? College Years, also a uh, founder of one of the fraternities. And imagine going to parties and this and that. A lot of my friends, we all did the same thing. But one of the other unique thing that I did was staying home a lot of times. And I was just working online. Yes, of course. No surprise, right? Computer guy. So I was working online and I was always drinking beers. Okay, I was drinking, drinking, drinking. But oh, of course, it started way back 2008, nine college years. Okay, started, started. My relationship, I didn't have any proper relationships, but kind of got twisted. And that's it. I just drank, I drank, I went out, I partied, traveled. This, I don't know if I should say I regretted, because yes, the DUI part, another part I do regret. And I would regret more if I don't explain and give it to you people so others can learn from it, right? So, anyways, kind of the chase. Am I an alcoholic? Because when I drink, I drink. When I don't, I don't. Now, my current status, I haven't drank this year because I have bigger mission. But I'm just talking about my college years and I'm talking about that whole decade, all right? More than decades, just drinking. Even after college, I was just chilling and partying and Euro trip and just whatnot. And this is exactly what happened. So five, six years back, all right? Around 2017, I believe so. And of course, prior to that, I did go back to Bangladesh um some wedding proposals or whatnot like i said my relationship brutal i'll have an episode on that but it, it's it's insane okay after i got back and i remember and it's it's messy when you talk about it when you think about it i'm accountable okay you can blame everybody else around you hey no this is what it is if you are drinking and you're driving you break some law unfortunately you get caught that's what it is but depends on what you did ladies and gents Throughout my life, I've not gone out and tried to do stupid things with people like drink and go crazy or destroy property. Nope. It's just me doing my thing. And that's what it's, it's a gray area. I told you, right? It's like self-medication in your own zone, figuring out things, not partying and trying to cause problem, not even trying to influence people. And hence, I don't talk about these things all the time because I'm not here to influence people. Oh, this is a cool thing to do. You should do this. You should go drink. You should go smoke. No, it's not. If somebody's doing it, if I'm doing it, it's personal. I'd rather keep it inside, but I also want to tell people. So, because again, if I'm not upfront, you see me go smoke weed or joint on street. Oh my God, what is he doing? I don't want that. Hence, I'm so upfront because it makes it easy for me. It's just like nobody comes out surprised. And that's one of the things. People are like confused. Hey, why is he saying all, all these things? Like it's as personal. Like, is he scared? Yeah, I mean, I'm, why am I scared? Yeah, I mean, hold on. Yeah, I'm scared of not telling the truth about myself because then what happens? I'm going to be pretending for the rest of my life. And it's hard because when you go out and when you're home, you're something else. And when you're outside in front of people, you're totally something else because you're pretending. And that's just, you know, I think it's, it burns you inside. Yeah, sure. You can play J.K. and Hyde, alter egos, but that just goes for to some extent. But inside the soul, man, you got to feed that, right? Like I say, like, if you can't sleep peacefully at night, then what is success anyways? So anyways, getting to the chase. DUI, dirty business, man. Dirty business. Okay? One thing, please do not drink and drive. Do not drink anyways, man. Drinking is just, just peasant, peasantry, whatever that name is. Okay? It just wastes time, makes you lazy, makes you fat, uh, screws your brain. It is what it is. And you might say the same thing for marijuana. Yeah, sure. But yeah, man. Again, different topic. Maybe I'll touch on that some other day. But let's skip to DUI and drinking, okay? So yes, I drank. I gave up drinking. Again, I drank, gave up drinking. So back and forth, I went to AA classes just because I wanted to see what's up. And there are certain things I did voluntarily. And there are certain things I did because I had to. Because the system made me do it. If not, I wouldn't get my license. And guess what, ladies and gents? Before I forget, okay? I will do my best to recall everything as clearly as possible in ascending order from the beginning till the end, okay? And when I said DUI, Double DUIs, okay? Oh, yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, I mean, second one, I kind of dodged because my lawyer is awesome. And also, it wasn't my fault. So, obviously, I mean, law, you can, you can prove it. That's what it is, all right? So, here, take it from a great, with a grain of salt, man. But it's pure experience, okay? So, here's how it went. 2017, I was drinking. 
a friend of mine, it's downtown and Virginia, Commonwealth, brutal for DUIs. I heard. And it's not only Virginia. There's several other states that are pretty brutal when it comes to DUIs. Yes, DUI is brutal in every states and countries to some extent. But yeah, there are some state in USA which have some higher kind of punishment, whatever you want to call it, fine for DUIs. And Virginia is one of them. And it happens to be, yeah, unfortunately, I have to happen to be here. So, matter of fact, this is what happened. I just drank some. And some people do crazy stuff and get caught. It wasn't my case. It was a simple breaking a stop sign. And that was just inside a city, in a way, okay? Barely anybody. So I was driving. I just wanted to pick up my friend. I was working home, all right? And <laughs> my friend just messaged me. I actually remember, I, my friend mess messaged me, hey, man, can you pick me up? I need some, some website done so could, you can help me. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll just come and pick you. He was just five minutes away from me. Like I said, inner city, downtown. And it was 1st of April, April Fool's Day. Believe it or not, okay? Like I said, everything I'm going to tell you might sound like a movie scene or not, but it is exactly what it played, okay? So, ladies and gents, now everything gets interesting or whatever you want to call it. So, I, there, were, there was construction going on that, that, during that time. I was a little annoyed because of whatever happened in my whatever, you know. I was going through hard times, I would say that. I got back from Bangladesh and all the relationship, whatever, didn't, it put me in a loop, all right? Mental not, um, fog. It was, it was messy, all right? No support from no whatsoever. I was trying my best to pull things. I was drinking, spending so much money, honestly, getting, getting in debt. And I lost quite a bunch of stuff, which I mentioned. Lost my email list, affiliate marketing, quite a bunch of stuff. And yeah, it was stressful. I go pick this guy up. I'm in a loop figuring out why am I in detour? And there was this cop just beside this stop sign. I happened not to notice the stop sign because I was just a little frustrated. Okay, detour, detour, detour. Oh, stop sign, I didn't see. Cross that. Boom, they see me. First of April. And it was about noon, 1 p.m. Imagine this, right? 1, 2 p.m. 1, 2 p.m., somebody gets you and you're drunk. Well, you know, that, al that already puts something crazy on you, right? Like, oh, wow, somebody who's drinking in the morning or daytime, yeah, must be, must be an alcoholic, super alcoholic. Okay, I get, I get it. You can just call me that. So anyways, all right, pulls me over. They were in an SUV. And another thing, it depends on what city you're in. You have to be very careful. Cops are, some cops are decent, some cops are assholes. And that's what it is. I've dealt with a lot of cops back then when they pulled me. And it was just the same city and same people, university cops. So it was my university cop, obviously. <laughs> or was it not? It was state cop, a city cop. Pulled me over, right? There were two of them. I had quite a bunch of drink. And I don't know how much, but whatever, right? And they pulled me over. I had my shoes on. And what they do is first, and my friend was sitting beside me. And that guy, this guy is freaking out. Okay. I, I don't know what to say, but whatever. He's freaking out. And, um, and that's another worst part. When somebody's beside you, if you're by yourself and you can handle it, it's much easier. But when you have people around you or with you, it's like you're fucked. Right? Unfortunately. I mean, unless they're really, they know what they're doing. With Indian families or some other, man, this, they'll freak out. Anyways, I'm just saying. So, this is what it is, right? Um, sir, have you been drinking? I just stopped. Have you been drinking? By the way, while I was going, my car, I had a Ford Focus 2000. Oh, my God. While I was driving this, I almost touched another car because I kind of freaked out as soon as I saw the cop, right? Almost hit another car. It was crazy. I think I scratched it or something. <sighs> stopped it because my friend was screaming, hey, man, you just crossed the stop sign. There's a cop. I'm like, stop it. Cop comes, pulls me over. I stop. All right. He asked me to get out. I had this weird shoe. I kid you not. Okay. It's not that I couldn't walk. Hey, I know you might say, no, I understand you're doing this because you were drunk. Man, I'm telling you, take it with a grain of salt, but it's real. I could have done better. I could have walked. I don't know what was in my mindset, but I guess it's meant to, it's meant to have happened. You know, it was my, it was my day to have happened. Like God wanted that. It was a sign, simple. So that's why I said, like, whatever I tell you, I can keep blaming around the cops and stuff. No, I'm responsible for quite a bunch of stuff. And I got out of it, my responsibility, right? And I served. So that's the point. I've gone through the system. I paid my fines. I've paid my due, whatnot. I took care of myself. I got myself out of jail, whatever it is. So not, nobody came and bailed me out. Nobody. No family members, nobody. It's me. And that's exactly what made me who I am in a way. I was like, dude, what is this? Nobody cares. I mean, it's not like nobody cares, but it's just what it is. 
All right, this life is what it is and you need to be independent. That's what it is. At the end of the day, it makes you independent. It either makes you or it breaks you. And I try my best to just make myself, but breaking is not an option for me. All right, I tried. It doesn't work for me, breaking. <laughs> so anyways, now kind to the chase. Asked me to come and walk in a straight line and I was kind of dodging a little bit and I was laughing. I was dodging a little bit and asked me, breathalyzer. I said, I don't know what was I saying. Believe it or not, I don't remember. I, because that was the first time somebody caught, gets, gets you. I think I was pulled out. Uh, to be honest, I was pulled out once before. If you're in downtown, in a city, and you have parties and everything around, there's no doubt you'll be pulled, pulled out um, yeah, several times, right? Um, and matter of fact, I got a couple of tickets in the same freaking place. Exactly the point. And after now, I don't have tickets for five, six, seven years, whatever. My DUI was the last case I had. It's a crazy because that's, that shows you quite a bunch of stuff. Where you live, surrounding, a lot of things make difference. If you remember, I said your environment makes a huge difference, right? It just makes you think. Sometimes you don't want to do certain things, but it's just the environment makes you do that certain things. And you can just blame it. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't be in that environment. Guess what? Your friends sometimes will tell you that, but they will not be able to. They will tell you that they don't practice that themselves. Hey, man, I think you shouldn't drink. Hey, bro. Do you think you want to come for a party? Brah, you just said we should stop and I'll not. And yeah, but once in a while, it's fine, man. Yeah, there you go. See, sometimes like you got to listen to yourself. Be like, I think I need to do what I need to do. Because you have hundreds of people who tell you, the, they'll give you some good points, but there are also some bad points because they need to do some stuff and they need people around. Anyways, so what happened was, ladies and gents, that same time, I told you I'll go on off topic sometimes, but whatever. That time, asked me for breathalyzer. And I probably denied. So the dude handcuffed me, right? So he had told my friend, hey, can you drive? Can you just park this car? I was like, I don't know. What the hell is happening, man? You're just taking me somewhere? I'm like, what? What, what is happening? Like, this is exactly my expression. Like, what is happening? I just came out to pick my friend. And you're freaking, you putting me in the car. You handcuffed me, taking me to the jail. Like, what? Like, seriously? You know what I mean? Like, I just left the beer at home. I just, I was on the computer, didn't shut off anything. And all you know is that's it. Now I can't go back home. I'm going to jail. So the guy puts me in the back of the, obviously, police car. So, and then he drives me. And I'm just like, sir, what is this? What are you doing? Leave me, sir. Please leave me. What are you doing? It, it doesn't make sense. I have not done anything. You can't prove anything. I, I, will, I can walk. It's a shoe. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I said. Hey, he was just like laughing a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't say they were assholes. There were some cops I met, they were assholes. But most of the people, cops I've met throughout my, they were, they were decent enough. And some of them were young because they just joined the force. And matter of fact, I also have some of the cops who are in our fraternity. So it's, yeah, whatever, man. So anyways, the point is, he, took, he takes me to the jail, right? Uh, well, yeah, police station. And then, man, my first time there. <sighs> whatever. Anyways, yeah, imagine that, right? You are intoxicated to some extent. Obviously, I was drinking, right? You can't deny that. You can't be like, oh, I just drank and I'm nothing. And, the, I'm, and I was drinking IPA, higher ones, whatever. So imagine that. And then you were trying to go, come back home so you could just eat some food and chill. And then you end up in jail. You get there. Mugshot. Yeah, sir. Mugshot. Wow. So my mugshot. Mugshot. <laughs> go around. Sign some papers. Okay going the magistrate, whatever. Now what they do is they lock you up. So now the problem is I'm locked up in this cubicle, all right, small bathroom. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. What's happening? What's the deal? Like, okay, now what? They said, we can't leave you until you're sober. Now, okay, I'm fucked. So how do I know when I'm sober? Oh, shit. Okay, now I have to, and that's, that only happens over time. So I'm like, oh, man, now I got to wait hours and hours and hours and hours because there's no other way Alcohol goes out, gets out of your body if you, over time. That's the only way, over time, okay? So I waited there. I was inside the cubicle. I was banging the door, like, open up, open up. It's horrible. Can't drink water. I'm, uh, mine was going everywhere. I was like, pff. I was losing it, all right? It was messy. It was fucked up, extremely fucked up. I can still remember. It was horrible, all right? You can't see nothing because you're in a freaking cubicle. You can shout. They're just walking around once in a while. They just come and see. Uh, yeah, I don't care. They just move on. Yeah, I mean, nobody cares. You can just scream, do whatever. Nobody cares. Or they'll just put you in isolation, which actually happened later on, which I'm coming to in a second. So, ladies and gents, I was there. They left me after six, seven hours. 
it was dark in the evening. I came out, I got out of the police station with my phone, but now I don't know what to do. I don't have my car. I don't know where my friend is. So what I did, I called my friend. That same dude. Guess what? He was partying somewhere. He was clubbing. He's like, hey man, are you okay? I'm like, bro, can you just come and get me? Bro, you know what? I'm, I'm chilling. I'm just here with some girls, you know? So I'm like, bro, please. Um, I'm like, I don't know. He was like hung up or something. Like whatever happened. They were partying, like loud noise. So I, I was like, oh, wow. Okay, Uber. I got an Uber. Got an Uber. I got home. <sighs> I got home and I was trying to digest. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Who do I tell? What, I don't know what to do because I have roommates. At that time I had roommates, right? I had roommates not living in my same room, but in a same apart apartment household. I had to share with somebody. It was hard. So the first thing I did was I called my drug dealer. Well, I know it sucks, but whatever, man. I was like, man, that dude was a nice, he was an amazing painter. He just he used to sell marijuana on the side just to make some money, man. I mean, a lot of people did in college. I never did any of those, okay? Just letting you know. So I called him up and I was like, bro, Bro, I can't smoke weed anymore. Bro, I I'm not kidding you. I'm just, ladies and gents, this is exactly what I did. Bro, I can't smoke anymore. It's like, why? What happened? I'm like, bro, I just got a DUI and they are about to check me. They're going to drug test me and all this stuff. I need to smoke right now. I was like going through so much of stress that time. And I was like, I need to smoke right now. But I already have it in my body. And that marijuana taste in your body takes a long time to get out. And I already have it. And I'm already in a case. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Because I need to smoke right now and I can't smoke right now. And that time I was smoking cigarettes, which I quit um, two and a half to three years back. No, it's been almost four years now. Yeah, almost four years. But I was smoking cigarettes. So I was like, I have to do something. So my cigarette smoking increased because I can't do anything. I can't drink anymore. I can't smoke anymore. Now I'm stuck because my, I have to go to court. I have to do multiple things. So I'm like, okay, this is, this is brutal. Because... It just like everything breaking apart. Uh, my business, everything messed up. Money wise messed up. Now you're giving me this. I just came back from this, you know, relationship, whatever issues. Are. It, was, it was messy. And my mom and dad, yeah, I just come back home. Maybe we can do something. And my mom and dad, I mentioned in my previous episodes, I don't, I don't want to talk about them right now, seriously. Um, just total different level. One of, a, one of a unique case, man, my entire life and my whole family and everything. I mean, believe it or not. Uh, you, you can call me weird, call me that, oh no, you, you're wrong, your mom is right. I can prove you wrong. It's just how you want to see it, perspective. Because I can tell you, <laughs> I can say a couple of stuff, backing it up. Then I say, oh, you know what, people who say this, they don't even practice themselves. So how do you say it? That's what it is. Even if it's my mom, my sister, my dad, if it's what it is, right, it's real. Just because they're my mom, I have to sugarcoat things. It doesn't work that way. I mean, then if you get the wrong message, right? If my dad did something wrong and I, my son saw that and said, no, my dad is, and I'm like, no, he's grandpa. He's fine. That is, he can do it because he's grandpa. Yeah, okay, I'll be grandpa. I'll do it too, dad. Maybe not, right? I'm just saying, that's how I see it. So call me out if I do something wrong and maybe we can work on it, right? But that's what it is. Everybody's opinion. So anyways, got out of jail. This is exactly what happened. I tell my mom and dad, because as usual, if you tell my mom, my mom and dad, they're totally passive, all right, defensive. And like I, I just mentioned, I bailed myself out throughout my whole life. I didn't have anybody, okay? Uh, it's a fact. My dad just freaks out. Mom, they just are dependent on everything, system, whatever. And it's just what it is, okay? So um, I just didn't have any expectations and stuff. So I just had a friend, a two, told them, but from that moment, I lost my license. I, I couldn't drive. I can drink. I can smoke. And I, I'm going to keep going to several things. ASAP classes. I have to go through the court systems and multiple things. I didn't know what to expect. And people started judging me, obviously, as usual. I couldn't tell my family, extended family members and stuff, because why would you? It's a, it's a very dark topic to talk about. Like, yeah, you know, sometimes I wish, wow. What if I was going through and talking about it? There are some clips, like I said, I'll show down the road where I show my stuff. I'm actually, I'm out of the court and I'm doing a video, motivation video. I just guard the court and I'm like, yeah, look at this. I'm like, but nobody knows that I actually did a video on that. It's insane. But anyways, it's, it was crazy. So then what happened was, going to the chase, right? I had to go to ASAP 
alcoholic, whatever the class. Now I'll tell you this dirty business where it goes, right? Because if somebody wants to treat themselves, if the problem is in you, you need to work on yourself. But seems like everybody just wants money. Everybody wants to cash in on your fucking problem. Everybody, hear me out now. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to get canceled because of this. Because it's just lucrative money. If, if it's what it is. Once agency will send you to the other agency. The other agency will send you to the other agency. It's just a referral money making game. Okay? So I don't know how much money and time and mental issue. Like, you know, the, I have to go through this. So now you probably understand. Like when I say money, it's not that it's just lawyer fee. I'm talking about a bunch of other stuff. Okay? Not having a car. I'm using, I was using Uber every day. Okay, so there were like twenty, thirty, fifty dollars bills every day, because I was also going to the medical stuff and coming to the chick. Come, uh, I'm going to mention the juicy part because we are not even done yet, and I really don't want to drag this so long. Really, I'm just talking about the first DUI, and you might be thinking, "Hold on, you're just talking about the first, but you said second, and you said two DUIs. What happened to the second one? Oh wow, yeah, I'm coming to that in a second. Wow, man, wow, so much to deal with. This whole thing played in two, three years." took my like sucked my blood sucked my life man it was crazy but i was holding it tight patience i was battling this whole system right because i was trying to figure out who was my friend who was my enemy some people are trying to cash in on my money system literally when i say certain things you'll, you'll be blown away like mind blown so now Again, everybody knows this. Oh, yeah, ASAP. I understand. So basically, when you get a DUI, you have to, again, you lose your license for a year. First time, you lose a license for a year. If you get second DUI, within the first, uh, within less than a year of the first one, then, oh, sorry. Yeah, if you get the sec second DUI within the first year of the sec uh, first one, you lose your license for three years. That's brutal. Okay? I've met someone who had like four, D four DUIs. Four. That's insane. Okay, and this dude was 60-something. What does that show you? That's hard, man. I mean, there are a lot of people who go through crazy levels. I've met a lot of kind of people, man. When I say this, I mean it. And I've talked to a lot of people. And now a lot of you might say, oh my God, Rebel, you went to jail. Oh yeah. By the way, this was just one night. Let's, I'll come back to the second part. This was just one night, just jail. Okay, I get it. I was there for several hours. I got out, signed papers, whatever, right? Now the part, I have to hire a lawyer. I have to do this, that. So what happened was I told this friend, the same guy. Hey, man, do you know anybody? He said, hey, man, um, I know of my dad. He knows of, he has a friend. And Keith, he's an amazing guy. So I immediately took the number and I went to see him. He was in the same city. This dude is amazing, okay, Keith. And I, I mentioned him in my, one of my channel, my YouTube. He's, he's an amazing lawyer, okay? I talked about it. I met him. And this is the first time dealing with all these cases and stuff. So I met him. And he said, this is my charge. Pay me when you can, in installment, how you can. That was interesting. And actually, I did that way. Not that I didn't have money, but now think about a second. Whatever money I had, everything was going fast because of all the issues I was having. You know, like Uber, medical. I had to prove quite a bunch of stuff. Not like this. I had to go to court. I had to report to the pretrial. Okay? So there's a bunch of stuff. So anyway, this is what happened. I had to report to ASAP. And before, by the way, I forgot one important message. One, this is, how did, I, how did I miss out on this? My alcohol level. So when I was inside, they made me, uh, what do you call it? There was a breathalyzer, but that was a big machine. It wasn't the one that you see in the, in the streets. It was a big one. And you got to blow in there. And you have to. If you don't, well, you can. Not, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about those law stuff, right? I was joking because it was hard. My thing, my reading came 0 .2, 0 0.24, okay? 0 0.24 is three times more. Three times more than the normal 0 0.08, which is like legal limit. Oh, my God. Three times more, you know, that's, and I had to tell this because it plays an important part in the entire journey. Because of that, a lot of things is, you know, yeah, it takes place. 0 0.24, ladies and gents. Yeah, one of a case. And mine was actually the highest one so far. I think there was one or one more, but I think mine was the highest one in the, the therapy class that I took. Okay, so here, hear me out. This is what happened. So now I have to go to the ASAP. Okay, ASAP is basically alcohol something something where you have to take the classes. You pass that class, one year goes by, and then you be a good guy. You don't do anything. You don't violate. Then you, get your you take a test again. Then you get your license back. 
wow, what a journey now. So I have to do this. I have to go through ASAP class. ASAP class is about four, um, it's two months. Yeah, it's crazy. It's almost eight, eight weeks, I believe so. Eight weeks, four weeks or something. Sometimes they condense it. It's that. Your case manager can call you anytime, can drug test you anytime throughout the year. I mean, they can just, this is the, the craziest part. They have the strings, basically. They can pull anything they want, anytime they want. They call you from anywhere, you have to a- attend. If you want your license back, you have to be there. That's messy, right? Thankfully, I didn't have that kind of asshole managers, but yes, there were some assholes. And I'll tell you in a second, all right? Oh my goodness, man, there were some assholes. But anyway, this is what happened. So, unbelievable. Man, I can still believe this. This is so clear in my head. ASAP. Hundred and some dollar, two hundred dollars, whatever fee, 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 court fee, this fee, that fee, just fee, money, 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 money. You're just throwing money everywhere. Each sessions you're paying money. Okay, cool. Now they said, all right, based on your uh, your reading, two point two four, we want you to see a therapist. All right, and the therapist will decide whether you need some extra classes there or you can just take our classes and get done with it. Guess what? I mean, who doesn't want to make money, right? Uh, bling, bling. I mean, come on. Sure. So there's some good people who are honest. But man, when you get an opportunity, a guy with 0.24, sure, put him in therapy. Put him in this, put him in that, charge him. Because now you, have, you can pull the strings. You have this shit, right? You can pull the strings. Because I want my license back. And I cannot get it if I don't follow the rules. I ha- this is the problem. That's, that is a true slavery, ladies and gents. That's true slavery. Real term of slavery. Because... Literally, they can make you do whatever. And some of them actually did that, and which I'm going to come to in a second. All right? So anyways, gone through the classes, plays that, right? So I see this lady. I don't want to mention her name right now. Oh, my God. Such a bitch. She makes so much money. I don't know how can she sleep at you know, peace at night, but I get it. But anyway. All right? So, but before meeting her, before meeting her, I went to this ASAP class. I registered, and they told me, there is this orientation, Okay? And you have to come to the orientation. Everybody comes to the orientation. I said, okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, of course. So guess what I did that night? And the orientation was just, I think, next following two days later. After the, when I, I was released the same night, right? After following day. Oh, my God. Just one day, gap, next day. That same day, I was so frustrated. Guess what I did? I went to D.C., all right? I met a bunch of friends. And I drank. I drank. I drank. I drank more alcohol. I know that my class... I have this orientation ASAP. I don't know. What I, now you can call me an alcoholic. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I mean, who does that? This is brutal. I didn't know that they would brutalize you in that ASAP class. I mean, who would know, right? Wow. Alcohol, they will not brutalize you. Who would know? Yeah, sure. How stupid. Like, seriously. It's crazy. It's real. And I, that's exactly what happened. I came home at 5 a.m. in the morning. Pretty much messed up. All right. I didn't drive. I came home Uber because I can't drive. Obviously, my license is gone. Now the class is at eight o'clock, three hours. So I don't know how to sleep and wake up and get things done. But okay, I just go. I go. Now we are all sitting in a room. He asks us to step up and come to the thing and breathalyzer. I'm like, oh shit. Now what? I mean, I can't pretend. I thought, you know, maybe it's fine. Because I did it last night, you know, it's not today. Because it's not that I get brutalized every day. Once you do it, you get it, okay. But if I've done it several you know, hours back, maybe not, you know, whatever. All right, so one by one goes and blows. I go and blow. The thing is, everybody goes and like, ding, ding, green, ding. Mine goes like, ding, 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 ding. I'm like, oh, hold on. He's like, could you just do it again? I'm like, maybe there's a problem, okay. Ding, 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 ding. He's like, could you just step step out and come to my room i'm like yeah yeah sure i don't know what he wants to talk about but i said okay and then and then i go so she stopped bothering me and then i go and he tells me so basically your whole thing breathalyzer it's way above the limit of even doing a class today for orientation you're not even allowed to be here and i could charge you for public intoxication and I was like, okay, um, so what, do, what should I do right now? It's like, you, you, you just have to make schedule an appointment again and some other time. And I'm like, all right, so, okay, I, I'm going to see, I'll see you soon then, right? And I really appreciate you. He's like, but you can't leave. Wait, what do you mean you can't leave? Yeah, I can't let you go. 
you're intoxicated. You have to call somebody to pick you up. Holy shit. I I'm going to take an Uber. No, you can't take an Uber. It's, it's not allowed. You have to just call somebody to pick you up. Now you're making me dependent. Why is the system so broken, man? Now I have to call somebody to do that. I can't even, even if I'm sure. So I called the same friend of mine. I'm like, hey, man, could you just pick me up? <laughs> He's like, yeah, okay, I'm coming. He picks me up, says a bunch of nonsense. I have to take it. <laughs> and then we go. And sure, sign up for a bunch of classes, right? Next day, I go see this lady. She tells me, all right, Mr. Rebel, based on all this thing, I think you need 16 classes, one six. Each class is $40. Four zero dollar, sixteen classes sessions. One each session is an hour long, an hour half long depends. Once a while we do urine test, drug test. For that you have to pay extra money. I think twenty five dollars whenever we do that, and we can call you anytime randomly to do that as well if you want to. Okay, she has all the power. Wow. Now the problem is, who knew, man? Right? You have to mention you smoke weed. Who mentions all those things, and especially when you're caught for the first time? But yeah, I think it helps. You need to be honest. All right. So just because I didn't say that I smoked weed in the past and there was a TSC in my body. Ladies and gents, hear me out. My first drug test that she did, I failed. All right. Because obviously, how can you take your my one out of your system in 30 days? Like if I smoked today and got caught tomorrow, obviously I'm going to test positive after a week or two or three. So... It just depends on human character or whatever, you know, people, honesty, whatever it is. You could just let it go or you could just be a bitch. She decided to be a bitch. She said, because of that, I've decided to double your classes. So from 16, it's 32 now. So now whatever I was paying, I'm going to pay double. And plus I have to go double the time. I mean, you know, this, is, this was brutal. So I was like, what, what, what is this? Like I'm going through one by one system. Now you're charging me like for stuff that I didn't do after this classes because the reading can tell you that you did some, you know, it, it goes down slowly. But yeah, but you should have mentioned this. You didn't tell us before. Wow. I went to my lawyer. I said, this is not cool, man. What am I supposed to do? This is not funny. I took 16, then ASAP classes, then so much more. Okay, now you're giving me 32. Can we just do something about this? He wrote a letter. He wrote a letter to her. She called me out in front of the crowd. Not a big of a deal. Like, you know, we have been, we were in the class. There are a lot of people, almost 20 people and stuff. And everybody's like making fun of her sometimes and like, you know, bitching about her. Like, oh my God, look how much money she makes. Each person gives her $20, $40 every session. She has two sessions a day, three sessions. Oh my God. Drives Lexus, drives this. I'm like, yeah, what a business, right? One refers to the other, other refers to this. Like, what a business. And everybody, some of, most of them, all different stories. Young people, 18 years old, 17 years old. Um, alcohol problem, uh, what? Dr uh, <sighs> drug issues. I've se seen several with cocaine issues. Um, man, drove into some issue, uh, what? Drove the car into a tree. Crazy stuff. And they make you go through a lot of stuff. Okay, paperwork. Learn lessons. What kind of stories? Tell stories. What would you do in this situation? These are the classes you, go, you have to take, basically, right? All the therapy classes. Go together. How can we be a better, whatever, blah, 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 this, that. Watch some TV show. How DUI is bad. How people are dying. This, that. Okay. A fat fucking TV. Not even LCD TV. Whatever. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. $40 into 32 sessions. And that's not it. Because I paid her for the initiation yeah, when you join the fucking program, you have to pay her at, like that money. <sighs> Whatever. Anyways, so this is exactly the point. I went through all the classes, all right, without going, getting any other checks or red flag, raising red flag, ladies and gents, I kid you not. It was hard, but I wasn't doing. So what I'm trying to tell you, I stopped alcohol like this. I had to because I want my license back. A lot of people don't. They can't do it. And I see, I've seen it. They make the mistake again and again. They fall for the same shit. They go back in jail. I've met so, so many people from the different walk of life. That's why I can tell you some stories. And it's interesting. because Some of them, it's their fault. Some of them, it's not their fault. It's just, it's hard. They need to be very strong to come out of it. It's very hard. They need support. And I, I don't see that they're getting the right support because they're actually being, being pushed down the hole. And they might, sometimes they know that this is happening. 
but they're not even doing anything about it. So I don't know who to blame, what not to do, but again, be responsible. That's all I can tell you, okay? So I was not only going through this, I was trying to learn. I was trying to make things out of it. See, that's what I'm saying. I would only really lose those money and all that time if I didn't tell this story, if people wouldn't watch this and learn something out of it. That would be waste. Then she would be the winner. I, won't, I don't want her to win. You know, matter of fact, when I went on her reviews on Google and stuff, she, all negative reviews. I didn't even have to leave anything. It was all negative about from people. Oh, she does this. She does. She puts extra classes. So I was like, oh, wow, I was right. Because I had no other choices than to pick her. When I do something, we all check on reviews. And when you see two people in your area and both of them are nasty, you try to pick which is the less nastier. And I found one who happens to be the bad one, unfortunately. So anyway. All right, I've learned quite a bunch of stuff, a lot of different kind of people, et cetera, et cetera. Gone through it, finished my classes, all right? I get my, I get my license back, all right? Ladies and gents, long story, right? I know. And I'm glad that you're still here, all right? So I got my license back. First test, got my license. Second test, which I gave after DUI, I got my second. So I took two tests, right? Not everybody gets to test, take multiple tests in their life. I'm telling you, special. I took two double driving tests, all right, so far. So I got my license back after all this shenanigan, okay, going through all this thing. After one year, I got my, I guess I got my license, I wait, get my license back. And obviously I have to pay insurance. Um, there's an extra insurance for DUI people, which is pathetic. You got to pay that for three years in a row. Okay. So first, first one, you pay three years. That's what it is. Can't help it. Uh, FR44 something. It's financial responsibility because you are a risky driver now. That's another business, ladies and gents. You're a risky driver. And guess what? Some of, some of the people, they also have the breathalyzer on their car, the locker. That is another business because you have to go and get it installed, which also fucks up your car. Yeah, a lot of time, most often. So it's just literally from one place to another. It's just businesses. And I've also been to A classes, alcohol anonymous classes. Told a story. One dude told me, hey man, I think you should tell your story often, very motivating. I'm like, yeah, really? Really? Maybe, maybe. But it's, it was really hard to relate because they are saying I'm an alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic, but I, am, I wasn't feeling like I'm an alcoholic, okay? If, if I wasn't feeling, I don't know, maybe. So I had to just say, yeah, sure. I have some, <laughs> I am rebel and I have some alcohol problems. I didn't say I'm an alcoholic. I said I have some alcohol problems. So anyways, that was there. And second, I got my license back now, all right? Ladies and gents, everything's smooth. Now I'll tell you the second problem. And I'm going to end this because it's just so big. And sometimes maybe I'll do another impromptu, like a summary to give some of the important parts from this tool, uh, story I'm telling you, okay? Now the second part. I get my license back. I'm frustrated. Man, after such a long time, I didn't drive. I don't know what to do. I mean, yeah, I'm motivated. I'm, I need to do some stuff, right? So what I do, I call my friend up and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to buy a car. I bought, I did something which nobody should do. I, I'm, I basically did exactly what no car buyer should do. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. Okay. It's sad, but it's real. And that was one of the worst things I've done. So ladies and gents, have the DUI on my thing. I solve it, go through it, fight pay money, insurance, all these things, right? Now, and, and by the way, I had sold that Ford, whatever focus I had, obviously, because I couldn't drive. I sold it for like $700 or so. Yeah, I sold it for $700. That was my first car. So it was $700. And that was gone. So I, had to, I needed a new car. I got my license. But now the problem is my insurance is skyrocket, right? It's high because I just got, got out of DUI. I was looking at an Acura TL. because I just wanted an Acura for a long time. All right. It's just what it is. And of course, that's something I could afford after a DUI and just getting out of so much of issues and stuff. Man, an Acura Teal. And that was a very decent 2013 something. It was, I like that car, man. It was a little bulky, but it was a V6. So I saw one. It was like 17 or something thousand. Yeah, it was very decent, right? Because it was packaged with a lot of stuff. It, had, it was modified to some extent. I liked it. So I said, and I saw it on one car showroom. Okay. This was my first time buying a car. Right after my DUI, ladies and gents, instead of fixing my finances and stuff, I just went right in there. So I found a car I've been looking at for a long time. I go right in the dealership. I kid you not. My friend was with me. 
this guy was supposed to know about cars and stuff, but whatever. I go straight in there. I go straight in there. <laughs> I go pick up the key and I come out. What just happened? What just happened? Oh my goodness. All right. It was kind of brutal because, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. I go in, sign some papers. I call the insurance, my car, car insurance. And of course, I have to do the financing too, right? And they get you. They'll tell you a lot of bunch of stuff. Sir, sign here. Yes, don't worry. We got you. You can do this. You can do that. I've learned quite a bunch of stuff, ladies and gents. If I have to do revaluate a lot of th thing and redo, I would change a lot of things. But anyway, a lot, lot of things you learn from this. All right? My car insurance, guess what? My insurance was, just guess my insurance, car insurance. $100? Nope. 200 Nope. Three, nope, four, nope, five, nope, six hundred and sixty dollars. I was paying six hundred and sixty dollars a month for that car. Yep, six sixty. Oh well, I also got financing for some whatever person I don't remember APR. And guess what? I got financing because my credit score was on top. And this is what happens. Oh, you only paying one thousand dollars down payment, two thousand dollars down payment. I, I believe so, two thousand. Two thousand down payment, no problem, sir. Uh, but I don't think we can give you a loan because your income is, because, you know, my deal or whatever, your income, I'm not too sure. You can, because I've been self-employed. You have to show your employer, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I said, don't worry, we can work something out. He goes inside, whatever, the manager calls up some financial companies and they get me a rate or whatever. Oh yeah, we can get, we got you your, because your credit score is amazing and et cetera, et cetera. Wow. I'm excited. So ladies and gents, I get out with a key. I actually drive the car home and all I do, and I just know that I have to pay $660 to insurance every month and I had to pay 600 something or 700 something for car payment every month or 600 something, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, so just after DUI and everything, I get the car, I drive home, I'm fancy, I'm all good, right? Back on, all right. I drive, I go chill because I got my car, I wanted to just rage. I go chill, I have fun. I have, I have fun. Two months. Two months, I had fun. Two months. November, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, ladies and gents, I kid you not. It seems like a movie, but it's not. Thanksgiving night, okay? In the afternoon, evening, I just told my roommate, what I'm, I'm like, hey man, I'm just going out for a drive. I'll be back. I have Thanksgiving with my family. They're having turkey and all this thing. I think I should have said this earlier on because this is very things gets juicier. You know, I was like, thanks. I go out, drink somewhere. I don't know what. I, I drank some tequila, I remember. I don't know how much I drank. I don't know why I drank. Okay? It's not that I started drinking again. It was rare. It was just once a while. Okay? I was just drinking. But yeah, I drank tequila. I don't know how many shots. Maybe 20, 30. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay? So then I was coming back. I was driving back, and I don't remember of driving back home. I remember I opened my eyes and it was jail. Fuck. <laughs> Ladies and gents, so November, Thanksgiving night, I met with an accident, all right? So the same car, Acura, I don't know, it, was, it wasn't brutal. It was empty at night, 2 o'clock or something. Nobody was present in that area. I hit a car. It was, the car was somewhere, I don't know, my car hits the back of another car, and the, the bag popped out everywhere on my face. I was just gone, like, you know, it's like, boom, I was blinded by the stardust. I don't know what was happening, literally. I got out of the car, and I did something, I don't know. I got out of the car, I did go back, and I was like, oh, what, what, something, what? and I, did, I was sitting behind the car. I was sitting on the ground behind the car and I see a cop coming, flashing and coming because the problem is that my car wouldn't start. So I couldn't like take the car and drive away. So I was like, fuck man, like I'm a car wouldn't like drive, man. I'm like, fuck, I can't just like leave the car and like run around. I mean, the cops are going to get me anyways, right? So I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> so I was just sitting there chilling. I was like, <sighs> chill, 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 chill. The cop comes, one cop. This guy's a young, young dude, young cop. He was younger than me, all right, young cop. And he was a good guy. I even told him later on. I remember. I forgot his name, but I tell him, 
you, you know, you're a good guy, man. I told him in, in court because he even looked at me. He said he bowed down. He's like, rebel? I'm like, yeah, good guy, man. Officer. So he handcuffs me. He drives me to jail. Ladies and gents, this was worse than the first one. <laughs> this was worse than the first one. I just got out of the first one. And within five months, within five months, can you understand this? Like within five months, Thanksgiving night, I end up in a prison cell. And now the problem is, hear me out. I'm locked in. It's Thanksgiving. Friday, Black Friday, it's holiday. Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, holiday weekend. Monday is when the court opens, which means I'm stuck in for the entire weekend. I'm like, dude, what? I'm not even charged. So what? Oh my God. Yeah, I know, I know. It's crazy. I was inside. It's a huge hall. I was going in. And there's a big dudes and like, you know, wearing the orange jumpsuit and like looking at me like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait. I'm coming. I'm coming. Chill, 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 chill. Amigo, come. Chill, chill. Okay, I'm coming. And come on, man. You know? So, yeah. They put me inside this hall. A lot of other people. One is mopping. Others are sleeping. Some, some doing crazy stuff. There's an officer sitting in the middle of, you know, and then there's a TV everywhere. Some are watching movies, Spider-Man movie. I go, get on my bed, tiny bed, and I lie down. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I pray. I do pray. I mean, you know, once in a while I pray. So it's not like I go to prison and I pray. I'm, not, I'm like, yeah, I go to pray right now, man. Okay, you know, that's all least I can do, man. Get out of here and pray. Huge hall, man. You look upstairs like, oh, wow, wow. But now the problem is Thanksgiving. Where's the turkey? No turkey in jail? Like, dude, where's the turkey? We want turkey. We want turkey. But there's no turkey. There was no turkey. There was no turkey, man. I thought they would at least serve chicken, but there was no chicken. I was suffering. Thursday night, Friday, I'm suffering. I'm choking. Think about this for a second. I had this huge cut because of the belt. Instead of calling 911, taking me to medical, whatever, they took me to jail. I had bruises. I, I, had cho I was choking to some extent. I have asthma, not asthma, but, you know, like <sighs> allergies and stuff. And this whole thing, the bag popped out on my face and you take me to jail. How do you expect me to say anything? I don't know after that whatever happened. They asked me to blow in something. I couldn't blow. Yep, that's exactly what happened. This time, second, I couldn't blow in that thing. I was choking. Yep, I couldn't blow. So they couldn't get my reading. Even till today, they don't know my reading, ladies and gents. So I cannot tell you what happened. Exactly. Because I couldn't blow in the system. It was a system that was flawed. Okay? <laughs> so, I was there. I remember second day, I took a dump. I can't flush. The dump is right there. And I'm like, dude, there are jail. There are people in the jail. Like, jail. Like, a lot of people. How the fuck? I don't want them to see my poop. There was one dude. He was a very nice guy, man. He was, like, cleaning up. He's like, hey, man. I'm like, hey, you want me to help you? Because I don't know what to do. I need to be active. I'm like, hey, let me just mop. You go clean my dump. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gents, I kid you not. I said, hey, you know what, bro? I don't know how to clean. It's not going. What do I do? It's fucking flooding. Like, it's almost coming out of the sink or whatever. So let me just mop. Would you help me with that? He's like, he did something. I don't know. He literally fucking take, taking care of myself. There are some good people, man. You can't judge people. I'll tell you this based on my experience, man. All right? It's insane. Anyway. Now hear me out, okay? It gets interesting, I know. This is the climax. It gets better. It gets better. So, I'm choking. They, they're giving me food. I'm throwing up. It's disgusting. I, I don't know. I'm just not liking it, man. I'm in a toxic of whatever mindset, like totally blown away, right? With the air dust, whatever. And I'm still in the prison. I can't process that. Guess what? There was a phone. A, there's a phone in the jail, right? You can call your family. I don't, have, I don't know the number. I don't have numbers to call my family. I remember my dad's number, okay? Just out of nowhere. And I'm like, what's the point calling him? Nobody bail me out anyways and nobody will bail me out. It's me who's going to do it. But at least I'll feel better. At least, you know, they will know. Because they, I was supposed to be in Thanksgiving with them. Imagine, you're supposed to be there at some place and you're gone all of a sudden for several days without any, you know, stress. 
<laughs> no one. So this is exactly what happened, all right? I, I was trying to find the number and I found some number in my head and I thought, you know, is this the number? Maybe. So I kept dialing the number. The number rings. I don't know. Nobody's picking up. I'm like, oh my God. Whether I'm dialing the long, wrong number or my dad is not picking up. Whatever. It's one of the cases. So I, I couldn't reach anybody, all right? Day two. Day two, I'm choking. They take me out because I'm, I, I, I want some medical attention. Oh, Mr. Uh, what happened? Do you need some extra food? Do you, do you need an apple? What the fuck did an apple do, man? Like, you're putting me in jail after all this thing, no medical attention, and you're just, like, giving me an apple. Like, how, how about you give me a pizza, then, if you have to offer me? Like, how about biryani? Like, really? Guess what? They put me in another small room so I can just rest in there. And guess who was there? <laughs> there was one guy who had this much of this long stitch right here. All right? He had this big stitch right here. And I said, bro, what did you do? He's like, bro, I beat the shit out of that guy. Like a broken nose, man. I'm like, bro, why would you do that thing, man? He's like, I'm not going to take it, man. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm like, oh my goodness. You put me in this cell with this guy? I just, I was like in the corner and I was like, I was like, my stomach was bad, cramping. And I was like, oh, and this guy started screaming. He's like, nurse, bro, this guy's choking. He's, he's about to die. He's about to die. I'm like, I'm just like, I don't know, man. That, that, that time, it's like, you don't know what to say, what to do. It's just, you're living that moment. And this is not like movie scene. It's literally like, it's not like somebody will come and say, cut, done, go home, pack up. It's literally like your whole action is, you know, if you do something stupid, you, it, it'll have repercussions. Like it's going to have consequences. It's not like, oh yeah, there's nothing. So every action will have consequences. Whatever you do, whatever I did would have that. It'll play out in the court everywhere. So I had to be very careful, right? Anyway, this dude, nothing, no issues, man. He was fine. So I was now moved to another, the, again, back to the big cell. Now the problem, except the fact I have to be there for four days. Entire weekend, and then I have to go, Monday they will release me. So this is exactly what happened. I got through it. Four freaking nights. Straight. When I thought I'll come home, I went to jail. So, after four nights, they released me. My mind, gone. Because you're seeing daylight after four days. I'm like, Phew. And then, you're trying to process. Now, how do you explain this to your mom and dad? Second time? Not only mom and dad, I'm just like anything. Like, how do you just process this? Second time? Second time? You can't smoke weed anymore? <gasps> you can't do anything else? Oh my God, man. Second time. Ladies and gents, I go to the court in that small place and she says, he or, I think she, you're, you're being charged for DUI, for second DUI. Do you have anything to say? I'm like, what, 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 what? All right out so now i'm out of the jail court whatever now i have to do the real challenge now the real challenge again begins again ladies and gents the real challenge begins second time you saw you heard the first time wasn't that the real challenge 32 sessions 32 and all that asap now i have to take the asap again i have to do therapy again i have to take the driving test again and i did i did i took the driving test again thrice yeah. I don't know, man. I sometimes feel bad that I lost time and some of the stuff. Some of them are my fault. I've learned quite a bunch of stuff, which is, that's what, that's what makes me stronger when I'm like, okay, I've learned it. I'm still alive because God wants me to, has a bigger plan for me. So that, that's the reason I'm able to tell the story instead of being a falling a victim to it, being locked up forever or whatever, you know, for junk shit. Because if you think about it for a second, this DUI, I wasn't going to harm anybody and stuff. Fine. I, I told you, it's against law. It's, you're not supposed to drink and drive. You shouldn't drink and drive because you're ruining other people's life, your family's life, everything else. It's not good. But if you think about this case, were they, were they really trying to help me? And my case wasn't like the crazy thing. I broke, you know, everything happened like tiny. Stop sign, boom. Just a stop sign, boom. Not like I drove on something or crashed on some store or something. Okay, that's not Second one, fine, I hit a car, insurance covered it and all that stuff. So here's the story, right? What happened to the car, right? The car got towed away. 
So as soon as I came out, now I have to find my car. I found out the car was towed away and each day it was towed after one certain day, you have to pay extra for that. Wow. Now I have to pay for the car, which I don't even own. Okay. So best part, I called the insurance. Ladies and gents, the insurance covered the entire stuff. At the end of the day, I learned that car wasn't meant for me. I was not supposed to pay 600 and something dollars a month for that car or even the monthly. It was supposed to just be done. And that's exactly what happened. I lost that car. I didn't have to pay nothing. It took the insurance to care of it. And that's about it. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear anything from that guy who, whose car was damaged. Hey, if you're watching, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I mean, nobody sued me. I mean, why would you sue me for tiny stuff? I would have helped you anyways, but I couldn't, right? I was locked in, man. I couldn't come out and reach you. By the time I came, I mean, it was gone. So I couldn't. They just blame the system. Uh, what can I do? The system makes you do stupid things and then it will put the blame on you sometimes and they will make you feel like, oh, gaslight you. Like, oh, no, nah, it's your fault. You are the, f you're the addict. You're the problem. You need to, oh, no, no, no. You're not, <laughs> you're not the problem. You need to create the problem then give them the problem so they get into the problem. Now you give them the solution. How fucked up is that? Oh, anyway, I don't want to blame the system. Anyway, let's actually get finish this whole thing, right? Since I just, I'm talking about it, why not? Let's finish it. So now, okay, second one, I get out, I got the car thing out and this, uh, take my car out and oh, get it towed. <sighs> now, the court told me, since this happened again within the year, I have to get a bracelet i have to put that on my leg the alcohol bracelet on my leg ladies and gents i kid you not so i have to go to that certain location and put that bracelet on my foot so where is that oh you go to asap same thing again go to asap sign up there they will give you some of the stuff you follow this procedure that procedure blah 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 as usual i went to court and again here's the thing so far the court hasn't um, what do you call? By the way, the first case was one. It was, um, I, you know, gone through the system. I didn't have to pay any kind of crazy fines and stuff. The first one. ASAP done. I got it back. Second one, right? Now it's get serious because it's not funny. Funny business. Now they can, they have more reasons to get you, get you money, whatever. Right? Now the problem is I'm about to move cities. I don't want to be in the same city. Okay? And this is exactly what happened because now I want to move city. So, now you are stopping me from moving. If I'm, if I'm not done with my case, it's hard for me to move. Or I have to transfer it to the other, other city. Because if I, it's hard. If you're taking classes in a city for two months and I want to move to another city, I'm not going to keep going back and forth. So how about I transfer it to this city's local branch and then take the classes there? And that's exactly what I did. All right? Moving here three years, three and a half years or so ago, almost four, that's when I took the other second classes. Okay? Man, and I didn't have any car again. I was going through Uber and Lyft back and forth, and it was a little different here. Okay, so let me tell you this. This second one was, it was brutal as well. So, court, six months, bloody six months. Six months, I was going back and forth, ladies and gents. I was, it was pre-trial. My trial took place six months after my case. Think about this for a second. From November to all the way to June, May, that's what happened. So my case didn't have any hearing until a six-month case. And yeah, my lawyer needed time to prove my innocence and stuff, which I, yeah, sure. And it, it worked. I'm grateful. But that's not the point. The point is here, here's, here's the thing, right? Wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. When I think about it, it's so dark at times. When you think about the law system and all, who is here to help and not. Anyways, pay the court fee, pay all these fees. Now, I have to go get this bracelet. I pay them one-time fee for registration. And guess what? I have to pay $10 every single day for keeping that on my foot. I, want, I have to pay $10 just to put that on my foot. Like, do you understand this? <laughs> I don't want to pay $10. Please don't put this on my foot. No, sir. You have no choice. You have to put it and you have to pay us. So for six months, I was paying $10 a day, put that alcohol bracelet on my foot. And I had to be so careful because that shit could trigger Anything you did something stupid would, might, might trigger it. But for me, it didn't happen. But ladies and gents, with that, I literally traveled. With that, I literally went to medical checkups, but nobody seen it. Not that I was trying to hide, but it's embarrassing. Why would you want to wear that and go and pray in Friday prayers and mosque? But I literally had that. And you know what? 
uh, I, one of my relatives, she literally told me to distance at that moment when there was a crowd and that thing was visible. She said, don't come close to me. That's real. Because I had that on my leg. So that tells you a lot about the person, but that's fine. <laughs> because you have that bracelet on your leg. So yeah, you're a criminal, right? So yeah, sure. It's, it wasn't a GPS. It was an alcohol monitor. Six months. You wear that, you sleep. It's a heavy equipment. There was a battery. So after three months or so, I had to go swap the battery, change the battery. So I have to go there. They will do it for you. It's crazy. If, if, and they can call you anytime they want. Again, same thing, right? Told you. <laughs> they have the string now. The string's in, in so many hands now. It's insane. If it's false, false alarm, whatever, you're in trouble. You have to prove that it's false. So that, that was a problem. So six months I've gone through this. And not only that, I went through pre-trial before my trial, meaning I had to report every two weeks. It was every week and then it became every two weeks. Think about it for a second. Every two weeks I was reporting. And not only that, after I got off jail, right, that whatever, after following two days, I got myself admitted to emergency just because I needed to. After accident and all this thing happened, and they just took me to jail. <laughs> and my mind was like, boom. I was going through all this thing simultaneously, all right? <laughs> Insane. So emergency, they are going to, they build me a lot of, you know, obviously emergency. They gave me this and that. And I had to go to speech therapy, the, another place where I had to take an Uber. I did speech therapy. I did physical therapy just because I had to do it for my system. You know, I mean, that, that was for my, that was voluntarily because I thought it will help me with my case. Okay. And it probably did. All right. And, but it, I had to go through that extent that every other day I had to go to this hospital. Every other time I have to go to pre-trial. Every other day, some I have to go attend to this ASAP. I had to do the therapy. I mean, I don't know how to explain this. This, it, it, you know, it sucks everything out of your life. I'll just tell you this. I've heard stories from people um, that it'll give you craziness. Like, it's not just that they're suffering from only alcohol and stuff. That's one story. But falling in that trap and falling in the, the, the whole system trap is dragging shit out of them, making them poorer and it just mind craziness, okay? It's just insane. So anyways, I want to just finish it off real quick right now, okay? So... I've been paying so much and all this thing. And now, pre-trial. I have to go, go to this pre-trial. I have to go to a certain place every two other weeks. Why? Pre-trial. I have to go report. Before my trial, I have to report. Okay, so I was doing that. And my officer who was in charge, she was a... Fee okay, I'll tell you this real quick, okay? She was a bitch. And I'll tell you again why in a second. Okay? She put me over there on a drug test every two weeks or every week. So every other week, I was going to the spot and I was giving my pee, my pee sample every week, every week. And during this time, I was smoking cigarettes and I started smoking CBD because I can smoke TSC, I don't know, CBD. CBD is, by the way, it's legal. Virginia, DC, it's legal. CBD, TSC, you can grow marijuana in Virginia. You can grow two or three plants. It's legal. I'm not saying anybody to do, go and do illegal stuff or whatever, but I'm not even here to talk about that right now. But I'm just showing how crazy the system is, okay? It's, it's far beyond that you can imagine. So anyways, where the, I mean, drug tests and this and that. So I was giving pee samples and we are all in line. You, you'll be blown away when you see all these kind of people, all kind of people lined up. Some are coming for this charge, that charge, whatever, felony, that felony. Oh my God, it's brutal. So now, man... I feel like I'm just getting started in the story, man. Seriously, if you're still hearing all the stuff, okay, so far so good, okay? Now, interesting part. I go through all this, okay? I was, let me think for a second. DUI, second one. That jail part was very really nasty after the six months. <sighs> breather, man, I need a breather. When I think about this, even right now, it feels like it just happened. But things have changed, COVID and this and that. This was obviously way before COVID and all that stuff, right? And when I was, I discovered crypto and all this, it was way before, to some extent, okay? So anyway, cutting to the chase now, right? I, now I was six months, right? This lady, she put me on this thing. And then what happened was, I was having CBD. CBD has some, sometimes you, you can get, you can test positive because it has some TSC to some level. One day, I tested positive. I was like, no, it's impossible. How is it possible? It's not possible. I'm CBD. He's like, sorry, we can't do anything. Please take it with the officer. I'm like, 
shit, man. Imagine, pre-trial, tested positive on TSC. Like, oh, man, I don't want to get in trouble anymore. Like, I'm going to get out of it. This second one, whatever. I emailed my trial officer. I said, hey, listen, CBD is legal. It's over the counter. I just tested positive. Now, how am I supposed to prove that? I, I mean, I can because you got the level of it and whatever. She, she just emailed me saying, you are not supposed to email me and all this stuff. Say that, on, say that in court. Okay. I mean, what the fuck? Seriously. I, I even told this to my lawyer and he said, don't worry. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense. My lawyer was, like I said, he's, a, he's an amazing guy, man. And I'm not saying you have to support me if I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, lawyers are suppo supposed, supposed to support you because that's what they're paid for. But I'm just saying ethically, right? It makes sense when you think about it for a second. But anyway, it's insane. So guess what happened? She got laid off or she just, she, yeah, she left the job after a month, after a month. Another guy took over. This guy, I forgot his name, Mr. Steve or something. He was an amazing guy. He's an amazing. He was probably in his late 50s or 60s something. He was an amazing guy. Guess why? When he called me, he says, there's a problem in your paper. I kind of freaked out for a second. I'm like, what, why? What happened? What did he do? He said, no, you were not supposed to go for drug test. Who put you for drug test? I'm like, wait, what? No? But I, I didn't see this. I, I read stuff. How come I didn't see this? He's like, yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to. You're just here for pre-trial. Just report and that's it. So she put me on a drug test for what? For personal agenda? She had some hidden whatever shit, like grudge? Maybe she was having a bad day, so she just wanted to put it on me? Guess what, ladies and gents? That's exactly what happened, right? I mean, I wasn't supposed to go for that. So I, I tested positive. Now, that shouldn't matter. But again, <laughs> it sucks though, because it's on the paper in a way, right? You get the point? But I was not supposed to, technically, legally, so I'm fine with it. All right? I can get away. Okay? That just shows you how messed up the system is. <laughs> it's not like somebody will come and say and blame the system. Oh, no, 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 no. I rob people and they just uh, put me in jail. No, dude. When you rob, you do something wrong, that's a different case. But the, the system, sometimes it is, it's fucked up. All right? So after six months, let me just actually finish this off. After six months, I finally come. The day comes. Hearing day. Because back and forth now, throughout this year, I'm finishing my classes, all right? And by the way, I didn't still finish my class and stuff because I have yet to get the verdict, right? Because it's not, I was charged with DUI, accused, not like charged, right? It's not like I'm done yet. I still have my hearing. So finally, the moment of truth, the hearing day. I'm just like excited, but also nervous because my lawyer told me that I don't think we can do much, but uh, he told me to take a plea deal. And I was not sure what that was, but he did tell me something like, I think it's, it's going to be useful to you. And I was like, if you think it's going to be useful, I think I'll take it. Because, the, by the way, I do things based on what I feel and logic and stuff. Sometimes people will tell you certain things and you just act on it. Don't do that. Maybe not. I did because Keith made sense at that moment. Because it does make sense. And I'll tell you why. Because of all the medical stuff he did and all that stuff. So he said, don't worry. I talked to the lawyer. Maybe we can work something out. Okay? And then... He emailed me at night saying, I'm sorry, the prosecutor, the judge changed. The prosecutor is being very nasty. It's going to be hard. It's gonna be, I'm like, what the fuck? Seriously, when Keith says that, it's kind of like not cool, man. He's really good. I'm like, you know what? There's nothing I can do right now. Moment of truth. Just let's take it. What, what, what can I do? Take, a, take a, a second one. If you get a second one, you end up going to jail for another 10 days or so. Um, I don't know. Yeah, more than that. Or fines. Quite a bunch of stuff. It sucks. Lose license for three years. That's nasty. Lose license three years, so much of fines, and a lot of, lot of other stuff. Okay? So, moment of truth. Next day, I have to go. Guess what happened? I get, in, get to the court, right? I get to the court. Keith calls me out in the corner. He says, I have good news. Keith, what? At night, ladies and gents, I kid you not. This is exactly how it played out. Okay. He says, I have good news. I just talked to the prosecutor and we agreed on something really interesting. Okay. So you will agree to first, you'll agree to the first DUI. Okay, wait. I'll agree to the first DUI. What happened to the second one? Don't worry about the second one. You agree to the first one. All right. 
So I, I'm guilty of the first one. And if you, if you do that, you'll get a jail of like 10 days. But since you already served five, you just have to do five, five days more. And that's about it. And you can also choose weekend. Just do the weekend, two, three weekends, and you are just done. Right? I'm like, yeah. And also, you're not going to lose license for two, three years, one year. Okay. I'll take that deal any day. What are you talking about? Like, that, that's a big deal. Think about this for a second. It's a huge deal. Okay? Huge deal. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate you. So I said, yes. God, I, I'll take it. So I told the judge. Um, judge, I, I forgot, forgot his name. But um, he was married to another dude. He was, he, was, he was a cool guy. Judge, forgot his name. But anyway, he was new judge, appointed judge that time i kind of freaked out because one judge was there for six months and all of a sudden during my time somebody has to be there right different always but believe it or not during this time i was also attending court once a while i which i don't want to mention just because of pre-trial and some of this you know hearing i had to postpone so three months i had to postpone to six months because my lawyer needed more time okay so anyways i pleaded guilty i get the first degree uh, first degree first dui so again now i have one dui so i have one dui it's been years ago. That's it. Okay. So one year. Now the jail, jail part. I already served five days. Another jail. Oh my goodness. I have to go to jail again. This one, this one's a real jail. That one was just, okay. Yeah. That was actually the same thing. Lock up, jail. There's a difference, man. Prison, jail, uh, lock up, compound, whatever, you know, locations. But anyway, now it's like a jail, jail. Okay. You got to wear the orange suit. <laughs> I was actually wearing the orange suit the first day. The first, yeah, the first Thursday, you do the same thing. You get in the orange suit. But yes, I did the same thing. Anyway, I'm back in the orange suit. But now here's the, here what happened, okay? So I told the judge, hey, judge, could I please take the classes in the other city because I'm going to transfer? I'll finish the jail and I'll move out, move out of the city because I have other things to do. I'm going to move my business and everything in the other city, right? Close to D.C., Washington, D.C. I'm like, yeah. and he says, yeah, sure, we can do that. Do that. And I'm exactly that's what how it was playing out and i was like okay that's that's nice good timing i can go this time and get it done and all that stuff so i was like okay i can go to two weekends i'll be fine okay like saturday sunday saturday sunday and saturday sunday kind of thing so, i kid you not okay and this is the climax and the ending so during all this time i was smoking cbd CBD, no, no TSC. I didn't do any weed and stuff when I was in the probation, okay? I didn't do any of those. A lot of people cheat, and I've seen a lot of people cheat. So I don't know why would they do that. That shows desperation. They will have cocaine. They were like, oh, I get checked after one week. It doesn't stay in my system for one week. So, yeah, I can take coke. Coke doesn't stay long. All nonsense, you know? I mean, I've seen all those people. Oh, man, do you want my... Somebody offered me his pee. Hey man, do you want my pee? I can help you. No, bro, it's okay. Relax. <laughs> you don't need. I don't need your pee. You keep your pee. So yeah, it's, it's and not, not, a lot of females. You'll be surprised. Not only male. A lot of female. A lot of female. Like at least a lot of female in this thing. In this craziness. All kinds. All age groups. Okay. So ladies and gents, now the climax. I get in. Um, my my day comes. I go to the jail. I had to register for jail. Think about this for a second. I register for jail. I have to pay a registration fee for jail. I paid to go to jail. I literally did a video. After I got out of the jail, I did a video that I paid hundred or some dollars. It says jail entrance fee. <laughs> jail entrance fee. What fee is that? Who wants to take, give that fee and go to jail, man? They make you pay to, pay to go to jail in USA? Bro, I paid to go to jail. Nothing free. There's nothing for free. I told you, right? Remember I told you there's nothing for nothing that's free? Even if you're paying for your jail, man. Yeah, all the stuff you're eating in jail, or you're paying for it. Anyway, so this is what happened, right? I pay for jail. I know I have to go to jail. I have to prepare. Now we all know. Everything is set. Now I know exactly what happened. Now I have to go get my shit removed from my leg. Holy, hard, right? It was hard. So after six months, I go get this thing removed. I'm like, bro... You milked me, man. You guys milked so much money. $10 a day for six months. Wow. I don't know, man. Whatever. That's just one small part of the thing, right? And there's so many other things that's been happening. So anyway, car gone, this gone, that gone. Now, the jail part before I move to the city because that's the ending, right? The jail. And that's pretty much the ending. My experience, ladies and gents, is the pure jail here, okay? But it gets interesting. Much crazier. Morning. I have to report in the morning, 7 o'clock or something. So I take an Uber. 
I wasn't prepared for like long. Obviously, I was like, okay, I'm coming back on Sunday. So just I, I go there, and you can't take your cell phones. It's, it's just irony. How do you expect me? How do you expect me to go to a jail with no car, transportation, and no cell phone? Walk there? Can you understand that? So basically, they want somebody to drop you again, dependent, so they can carry the phone with them. Unfortunately, I had my phone with me. <laughs> now the problem is, how do you what, what do you do with that? Like you can't go back and drop your phone back or whatever. So one officer said, "Okay, fine, we'll keep your phone and stuff, right?" And there are a bunch of other guys. They are coming back. They said, "You know, they are do the same. They are doing the same thing. Timing. They come in, they do the weekend, and they go back. They do some volunteer work outside." So my thing was, I was offered that I will be taken out to do some community cleaning and all that stuff. I was excited. I was like, at least I'll be out. I'll do some work. I like to do work, man, rather, right? So they give you a green suit, a green jumpsuit. That's, that's like your sign. You are the workers. And that is different from the orange one. Orange one is like the regular ones. And green is like, yeah, you're working outside. So I kid you not, ladies and gents, just hear me out now, okay? I go inside. And there was this one guy. I just hated him. But later I said, you know what? I'm about to write a book someday. And I'm going to talk about this. I guess book... I don't know about podcast. Here it is. I literally told him, like, there's a lot of things I want to talk about because you, you guys, like, you know, the officers and some of them, like, you guys are, some of them are crazy. Their, their behavior, some of them are decent. Some of them are like, they want you to be in trouble. Like, I'll tell you this now, okay? I was doing CBD as usual. So my system, I didn't know they would check you in jail. <laughs> Who checks you? Who drug tests you in jail? So now this is a problem, Okay. They do test you, and I didn't know that. I was like, oh my God, okay. I didn't know I would t test positive because it's rare smoking CBD and again testing positive. So I was in a, so when I went there, seven o'clock, I report, they put in a big room where there's a bed and bunker. I was happy. I was like, oh fuck, there's a small TV. There's a bunch of people. We are, we are here because we are the workers. So we are in a green, uh, we, oh, we get to change our clothes. So we all get naked, we change our clothes, we wear the green uh, dress, right? And I'm like lying down. I'm like, okay, they'll call me for work and I'll just go out and, okay, let's get it done. But now you're just thinking what to do. Because there's nothing, that's the worst part when you're killing time, the most craziest thing, boredom, right? So ladies and gents, the guy comes in, that, that dude, he was younger. He was much younger than me. He was like, he's 24, 20 something. Dude comes in, the guard, P test. What? What P test? I was like proud. I was like, yeah, whatever, man. Let's get it done. I was the first one to go. I'm like, yeah, let's, let me just give one. Okay. Let me just... Yeah, take it. Shh. Dirty. What? Dirty. It's dirty. What does it mean? You're out of the program. What? You're out of the program. You can't do this community anymore. You have to see the... Um, we have to see a what? A, something. A setup. Like, there will be an officer who's going to talk about the situation, basically. Hearing. Some small hearing in the office. Because what I did. Like, I tested about... I, don't, I was, like, confused. Like, dude, dude, what is this bullshit? Like, for real. <laughs> they immediately... And I wasn't the only one. There was another two, two of them, I guess. They also tested positive. And they had... That, dude, listen. You know the worst part? My face reaction was on like straight up my face was like yeah i'll give it straight up right their one their one was like um something their one was a weird huh um they, they, you know they're pretending if they should do this or not they're a little scared in a way right i wasn't the case i was like that's i'm showing you like the difference I, they kind of knew that they would test positive to some extent or not but i no so i was the first one to give they test positive so now what happens was she, they this dude comes and says out next room why? Change clothes. What? Change clothes? Yep. Change clothes. Back to orange. Isolation. You just put me on green. Now, immediately, you're telling me to change back. Now, sending me to somewhere else called isolation because I violated a jail rule. Ladies and gents, kid you not. I go out, I change my clothes with the other two guys. They take us to the seven, eight floor. All right. And they lock up in isolation. And basically, if you break any sort of rules, even if it's a drug rule, in a weekend pro program, in a weekend program, if you get caught in drug tests, which I never knew, whatever, 
for do by the way i'm telling you honestly i didn't do any marijuana during the time it was cbd but this is exactly what happened unfortunately so right <laughs> they take us to seven eight floor put us in isolation so basically if you violate inside rules you get locked up in isolation for three days or so 72 hours or so okay okay that's nasty but uh, fine i don't have a choice but the problem is now my weekend is gone meaning it's not weekend anymore you're stuck and you're gonna finish this till the end so basically if i had one month to serve and i was doing it like every weekend they would have made me to do one month straight up that was nasty so i was like oh my god i didn't have one month i only had five days so i thought okay three days 72 hours then two more days five days but that's brutal meaning three days you're locked in this cubicle isolation nobody and then you are released in the public with people all right like regular people <laughs> if you have gone to jail maybe you understand what i'm saying but again whatever I, I can prove you a lot of it wrong because people just think oh this is i think this is this this is that no 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 people who actually experienced might be able to tell you but anyway going to the chase right and it's funny because a lot of people just saw me they want to talk to me and I said, uh, you know, I do some internet stuff. Like, hey, man, I want to be a rap star. And this is one thing I see. Uh, I don't want to get on a sidetrack, but I see this all the time, uh, especially in the, the black community. Um, a lot of them. One dude got locked up for 10 years for drug, tra uh, drug trafficking or something. 10 years. He was there in the same place. One dude was uh, unbelievable. Locked up 10 years. He served a long time in the same place. I was like, dude, this is not funny. You'd rather be in a big compound that you can play and do stuff. When you're locked up in like even in a huge hall room, it's not cool. But anyway, I was locked up in this cubicle where you have this tiny place to shit, okay? Water is just garbage. I mean, you know, and I was peeing yellow. Like, I mean, I don't know how to explain this. All you could do is just sing song and think about things, like whatever you want to do. Like, there's nothing you can do. People are screaming outside and singing songs and raps and stuff. And just no opening door. Every, every you get fed twice or thrice, twice, I think, thrice. Yeah, just... <laughs> Pancake. So it wasn't the worst thing ever. It wasn't, but I'm just saying. And if you don't eat, you're messed up. You're fucked. You're hungry for the rest of the night. And there were times I was like, my stomach cramp and hungry. I was like, oh, I need some food. But you know, I can, I can handle it. And it wasn't only that. It was that so much of stuff was going through at the same time, right? A lot of people outside, they were watching movies, Spider-Man, this, that. So basically, I spent three days in that small, cubicle, dark, place singing songs and doing stuff and after three days they called me out and put me in this place where this lady said oh you know you brought up this rule so that's why we have to do this and that and uh, now you have to finish the program oh you were kicked out of the program because of this okay now what two more days left so they put me in that big place with others now i do have a room but you have the chance you have the right to go to the room and come out of the room this is another thing so yeah you can lock the room you can ask the guard to open the room and you can come out and you can go in. There are a lot of people who has these stories and like books and stuff that people, family give them. Some have them, uh, ramen. A lot of them keep ramen. Yeah, they have bowl noodles and microwaves in there, man. <laughs> One dude was playing basketball. There was a basketball court. Like a huge hall. There were courts. So I'm like, yeah, you need those things or else you're going to go crazy. But I wasn't interested. I was just meditating, trying to figure out things. There was a Spider-Man movie I was trying to watch. And there was a bunch of, I told you, a bunch of other guys. Hey, man, I want to start a rap thing. Can you help, man, with social media? Hey man, if you're watching, I'm sorry, man. I know we all have struggles. I know a lot of people give some numbers. It's just not easy to take numbers and go around, but uh, I did lose quite a bunch of numbers. Life is hard, you know? But uh, yeah, ladies and gents. So I've gone through that and I got out after five days. When I got out, everything was kind of crazy because I just didn't expect that at all. Everything was unexpected. Everything that played out. Three days, this, that, and I was just dealing with it instantly, spontaneously. And that's... That's, that's, that's reality, okay? <laughs> None of them are made up stuff. And I was like laughing and crying and just making fool. I'm out, it just, you don't know what to say. At the end of the day, I got out of it. I moved cities and now I'm done with that, right? Now I have to do therapy and ASAP again. I did ASAP twice, VASAP they call it, like twice. I did therapy twice. So this ASAP, again, same stuff. I have to go to the classes, I finished it. Therapy, they want me to do therapy, but this time, the lady, she says, I don't want to do group therapy. We'll do individual therapy. So I was paying her, I think, $50 or $60 every session. 
Every session, $60, one-on-one, -on -one, nothing, just talking. It's just like me staying clean, <laughs> just a report and pay them money, and that's it. I had to do that for four, um, two months. I think she gave me 12 classes and so, and said, might give you more if required. I mean, come on. And to get there, I was using Uber. So just think about it for a second, how much money and time and resources like, were wasted you know, throughout my, this two, three years of whatever shenanigan. And what I've learned from it, I mean, you tell me what you have learned from this, that don't do stupid things because this system will try to find flaws in you, what you do. And believe it or not, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody will. Okay. It's a fact. I'm trying to like literally tell you that take a stand. Think for yourself. You don't have to be like, oh, Rebel said that. I have to be this. Oh, be th he's, uh, Andrew Tate said it. I have to be. You are you. You are your individuality. You are your unique DNA. I, I, it's a fact. Okay? We can support each other, views and stuff. But let's not be dependent on each other. That, that's the thing. I don't like dependency. Okay? It, it makes you poor, breaks you apart. Dependency runs in my family. And that's why I hate it the most. I hate it. I hate poverty because it makes it sucks. Because and and by the way, if you're if you get into this kind of trouble, at least make sure you're rich, okay? Because if you're poor, you're fucked. That's all I'll tell you. So, ladies and gents, that's exactly how the whole game plan went. All right. Those of you who keep saying, "Oh man, this jail down, bro," I've experienced all this thing, and you know what? A lot of people will say, "Oh, my story is harder than this guy. This guy's story is." Down. Yeah, everybody will say that their story is the best or their life was a, bit, a struggle or this, that, yeah. But my case is actually very unique. If you really pay attention, and I, this is just the beginning. If I told you a lot more, which I will, it's going to be very interesting. And kid you not, it's exactly what, how it played out. Like, and I feel like God has a bigger, better plan for me. And that's why I'm doing this. All right. So again, I appreciate you hearing, right, listening so far. And I'll just tell you this. Don't let the system play you. Okay? Act like a fool. Play like a dog. Okay? I always say this. Act like a fool. It's okay. Act like a fool. Work like a dog. Be loyal. Work like a dog. Dog works hard? Maybe, yeah. Dog works hard. Cat, cats don't work hard, man. So she's sleeping right here. <laughs> anyway, she's hungry. I want to feed her. So anyways, ladies and gents, I'm feeling a little empty right now. It's almost 7 o'clock in the morning. This is one of my longest podcasts so far. I'm going to be a little skeptical. My finger is going to shake a little bit before I press the upload button. Because it's, it's pretty dark. The moment I do it, there's two things that will happen. Either no one will watch it, because I always say this, that God will put my video in front of people, just like algorithm. If somebody's meant to watch it, they will. Meant to hear it, they will. Just like I get on some random post and I happen to find it you know, amusing. It's just like you are at the right time, at the right position, right? And the right opportunity arises. So anyway, thanks for listening. And um, I will definitely see you in the next episode. Until then, please stay safe. and. Uh, Truth shall prevail.